This has never been done before. Hard to believe. We've never done this before. We're going to get to John and what I consider the godfathers of classic Christian rock. John DeGroff, Greg Howe, and Bill Glover. We're going to let them tell a few stories and answer a few questions. Can you believe we got 40 years of history right here? Talk about your classic pet, right? I'm going to let these guys... Uh, I'm going to let these guys do some talking and uh, we'll shoot some questions in between and the floor is yours. Who wants to start? No, I mean, I think, are we supposed to talk? Okay. Uh, you've, already, you've already heard me talk, so guys, uh, I'm very interested in the originals. Hi. 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 My name is Bill. This is Craig. And John. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Praise the Lord. But we don't really know what to talk about, so we're going to wait until you ask the rest first. So we're, uh, we're ready to talk anytime, any, any kind of answer you want, as long as we know it. <laughs> Go ahead. I would like to hear something about your uh, reception out on the road here as Christian artists and some of the barriers that you can handle as well. I've got one. We, we had just finished our first, no, we had our first album done and we were, were just, we just finished our second album. And a lot of places we played, people still thought rock and roll was, was of the devil. They didn't think it was right. It scared them and it freaked them out. And we had seen, back in those days, we were much a, a smaller, our popularity was, was not like it is now, but we would see 40 people average a night get saved in our concerts, and uh, it was just powerful time, and God would reconfirm that we were in the right place and we were doing the right thing, but still, somebody would say something, and we would kind of doubt, well, gee, maybe, you know, just maybe there's something about this isn't right. So we got a gig in uh, Kansas City, and it was... Uh, outside on a Sunday morning under this great big pavilion pavilion in this great big park. So we had taken our whole first album and turned it into a 20 minute medley. And then we were then after that we were gonna do that and then go into the second album. Well when we got there, there were chairs in this pavilion and uh, as we got set up we had our great big martial lamps and, and uh, well, I grew my hair, my hair was just longer longer than that. And we had been told we played in Texas, you could hear us eight miles away. And so we set all that up in this park, and there were all these chairs, and then all these people started to come in. And what had happened, they had invited the, the, their congregation to come hear us. And that means right in the front row was great grandma and old folks. And, and the people that were gonna play before us was a guy playing piano and his wife on guitar playing, singing Bill Gaither hymns. And so they did their thing, and. and I mean, I was just, I was sweating. I was soaking wet. And I said, Bob, what are we going to do to heart me? He says, well, let's just do what we're supposed to do. So we started out into the medley on the first part of the song. And the audience responded as if somebody had, somebody had taken about 10 five-gallon pails of water and threw it on them. They just flipped out. And immediately, immediately, 20 or 30 people got up and just stomped off. And by the time... And, and I started getting scared, and I said, oh, God, I see, we're wrong. We really blew it. This isn't right. And the people continued to leave all through the medley. And I was just pouring down with emotional sweat. I was just, like, freaking out. I said, oh, God, we're wrong. I know we blew it. I know this isn't right. And every one of those people left until that pavilion was empty. And the youth pastor that hired us, the pastor was walking with him and his head was down and they were like back in the back and he was like discussing with them what was going on. Well, in this park, it was a great big giant park and it was full of motorcycle guys and long haired freaky people and all this. And when they heard all this music and when the whole congregation left, about 80 long haired folks came in and sat down and finished the concert with us. And I gave an altar call and 17 people came forward and gave their lives to Jesus and stood up and said yes. And I, I, I just never forgot the fact that, that God really showed me 
okay, you know, rest your fears, you're doing the right thing. It took driving that whole congregation completely out, completely to the person, everyone was gone, and all those crazy hippie folks that were in that great big park came in, and then those kids got saved. And it was, uh, it was a real confirmation of what we were doing. We actually one time got paid not to show up. <laughs> we, 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 had, we, had a, we had a gig in, I think it was Oklahoma, and for some of you, for some of you younger people, you're going to have a hard time believing this. This was during a part of time when the internet did not exist. Uh, uh, people communicated with what is called snail mail and the telephone. And the telephone was a device fashioned to the wall. So, and usually if they were going to cancel you, they didn't have the courage to call you and talk to you. They would send a letter. So if you had a concert on a Friday, the letter would show up on Thursday. Well, we had, we had this gig, and I'm pretty sure it was Oklahoma. So this letter shows up on Wednesday or Thursday, and it had a check in it, and it was from the promoter. And he said, listen, uh, we have some elders in our church that just don't feel rock and roll can be used to the Lord, but we made a commitment to you guys, and we know that you need the money, so here, you don't have to come. <laughs> there was another time, this, this, this one involves Bill. We were playing some, it was like a high school auditorium. And there was a whole group of people that were like old order Mennonite, you know, the ladies had the little calf thingies and they were very firm and proper. And he actually said, and I, he's not gonna, probably going to deny this, he said, if anybody here doesn't feel rock can be used to the Lord, get up, leave now. And a whole row of people got up. <laughs> he was just joking around and so we went, oh God, I no, remember that. No. <laughs> Don't ever say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob freaked out on that one. <laughs> well, there was, there was a, a lady singer by the name of Honey Tree. I don't know. If, okay. Well, she was uh, better known than us when, when we first started, and we actually opened for her which is kind of bizarre. And it was one of those school auditoriums where after we got done, they closed the curtains. Like this. And, and we're backstage with all our gear, and we're trying to be real quiet. And he had all his cymbals, and he tripped. <laughs> and she would just start, you know, she's nice and mellow and pretty, and, you know, crash, bang! And goes, ah, no, 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 no. That was the first job I got fired from. <laughs> okay, enough. Who's next? <laughs> Well, you guys, when you first got started, there weren't a whole lot of, of Christian rock bands around. Did you have interaction with some of those guys like Love Song? And I heard you mention Honey Tree, Love Song, and like Larry Norman, those kind of guys. That when you first, did you interact with them at all? We got to meet them. We were very fortunate to be from a church in Fort Wayne called Calvary Temple. And uh, they had everyone come through. They had a, a youth fellowship ran by a man named John Lloyd. It was called the Adam's Apple. And if you were anybody yeah. in the United States in Christian music, John would have you come and play. So we met everybody, and we got to back up all those people, and, and that really helped us a lot. We jammed with Keggy a few times. They would all come to the Adam's Apple, and, and we were the, at the time, we were kind of like the resident uh, front man. We would front these other bands and stuff. We would actually audition because uh, we would be needed a singer. You'll see that tonight. <laughs> Before we ever got a lead singer like John, we just got up and played and did our best. And you guys will see that tonight. You know, we're not real great singers, but we love to play our we love to play our instrument and praise God. You know, it, it's kind of neat. Before this all started, there was a, I knew Greg Volz before we even started in Petra, and him and I and a guy named Greg Dunneman were going to start a band. And Greg Dunneman didn't want to do that. Do you remember? Do you ever know Greg Dunneman? No. Well, anyway, he decided he didn't want to do it. And when we got into the band, I said, Bob, I said, I know this really good singer named Greg Volz. He could sing in our band. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. I don't know. No, we don't know him. We don't want to have anything to do with it. About a year later, Bob goes, I have an idea. There's a guy named Greg Volz. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he was a genius. And, and Bob was, but Bob, if you would tell him something, he would always say no. But, but it was not unusual for nine months later or so for him to come up with that idea. But I knew, I knew Greg Volz two years before he was, before we even talked about him being in the band. And he was a friend of mine. 
And I kept saying, Bob, I know this guy who could sing for us. Oh, no, 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 no that's not. <laughs> May I tell you that? It's, oh, wow. I got saved on uh, November 27th, 1971, and uh, I got saved at 4 o'clock in the morning. And when I got saved, when I accepted Christ, I didn't even know who he was. I just know that I said, God, I want you. And when I said that, the Lord came to me, and they asked me the next day. They said, well, are we you, at the Bible study, you accepted the Lord last night. And I said, what do you mean? I said, I know I've got God with me. So they opened up the scripture, and they told me that I had this, that it was Jesus. And I said, for everybody who wants to know, I, I, I say now that I accepted Christ last night. But I, I knew that the Lord came into my heart. I knew it. And the moment the Lord came into my heart, he said, you will play for me. At that moment, he said, you will play for me. And from that moment on, I was driven to, to do something with Christian music. And I had known Bob Hartman and, and because he lived in Bryan, Ohio, which was just a short way from where I was, about 30 or 40 miles from my home. And I got a hold of him and I said, Bob, 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 he said, we should start a rock band. He goes, no, he said, I don't want to be in a rock band. He said, he said he, because he had been in a rock band and it didn't work. Oh. It was called Dove. And he didn't want to do it. Because can, I, he, can I interject? There was one after Dove. Bob and I were in a band called Rapture before Petra. I yeah. was still in high school. Bob's four or five years older than me. He was a local guitar star in our county. And that was after Dove. Mm -hmm. And that lasted like maybe a summer. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I said, Bob, we should start a Christian rock band. He said, no. He said, I don't want to do it. He said, I don't, I'm not sure if, if Christian rock is of God. And I kept bothering him and I bugged him. And he said, well, I don't know. He said, he said I, I, I really don't know it. He said, but I'm going to go to Christian Training Center. It was a two-year Christian school in Fort Wayne. And uh, he said, if you want to uh, work with me, he said, come to Fort Wayne, we'll go to Christian Training Center. So Petra started, just Bob and I, singing acoustic guitar music in Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And we wrote a, a, whole, a whole string of Christian acoustic guitar songs that just disappeared. I wish I could have some of those. And at Christian Training Center, there was John, and, and uh, Bill had decided to go to Christian Training Center. And I asked Bill one night, I said, Bill, would you like to jam sometime? I was trying to put a band together. And uh, he said, sure. And, and Bob said, well, I know this guy named John DeGroff. And we got together on the platform of ch at church about November or so of 1972. And uh, we jammed on stage, and he came off the stage, and he goes, okay, I'll do it. The first night that I was in Fort Wayne, which would have been by September of 72, I bumped into him. And he had seen Rapture play. I think, like I said, we only lasted three or four months. And then the drummer wigged out. It was always the drummer. The drummer wigged out. <laughs> and something. And, 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 and my first night in, in Fort Wayne, I, I went to the Adams house. And I said, hey, aren't you that guy who plays with me? He invited me to jam with him and a bunch of friends, and like we all kind of just circled around each other for a while. That was that was what God gave me the night I got saved, and I had this burning desire just to find people to play with. And by the grace of God, the greatest gift of my life was that I found Bob Hartman. And look what Bob did after I was gone. I was the one who started it. I was the one who it was my idea. He didn't want to do it. But it was him who took it and went somewhere with it. It was just, you know, and you notice that in history. A lot of times the people that start things aren't the ones who make them the greatest. And, and I humbly say that. I am just humbled of God that I was the one that it came to me with that desire to play. And, and, uh, and it was just wonderful how we all became such close friends and worked together that first year.